Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman, is still in custody, and we've been talking about his case for some time here on this channel. If you recall, Jacob Chansley was the QAnon shaman, the guy with the horns on his head, and the guy with uh, sort of the, the very provocative outfit that made the media a lot of pictures a lot of people were very interested in what he was wearing that day and some of his activities right he made it into the senate chamber i believe and he got arrested for that he's been in custody ever since and we've been following the case along just to try to see what's happening here to make sure that he's getting a fair shake a uh, pr uh, conclusion he's not right the whole thing is being in my opinion, sort of overly extended. I think that he probably should have been uh, granted release earlier. He's still in custody. But there was one little rub in the case that caught my eye that we talked a little bit about. It was the mental competency stuff, right? He was, uh, the last time we had a case update for Chansley, he was just going into the process. And the competency proceedings in criminal law it sort of you know will vary from state to state, but loosely speaking, generally speaking, the way that this works, if you have a person who's been charged with a crime and you might have some questions about their mental capacity, whether they are capable of understanding the nature of the charges against them, whether they can make intelligent decisions about their lives and their futures, that's a pretty important concept of our law. You really can't be convicted of a crime if you were insane or if you didn't know what was happening. And so our law has provisions that will allow us to determine whether you're competent or not, competent to stand trial. So we saw that this was happening in Chansley's case. Chansley was being sent out to different evaluators. The way that it works in Arizona, you get three evaluators. You send the defendant to the first evaluator, and they're going to give you a determination on competency. This person is competent, this person is not. And this is actually a, quite a common thing. Right? A lot of people will, will show signs of this. And as a lawyer, as a judge, as a prosecutor, you want to confirm that you're working with somebody who knows what's happening. So when that is done, they'll typically go to a second counselor. And if both of those counselors, both of those uh, evaluators agree that a person is competent, they go right back into the court system. So they go through the same track. It's sort of a quick detour out to go check on competency. If they're good, they bring them right back. If they're not good, then they'll go and they'll have uh, sort of a, restor a restoration process to see if they can get treatment, get medication to restore them back to competency. And then the criminal proceedings can move forward arguably. Uh, there, there are often situations where they don't, right? Because you can make the argument that the person was not competent back during the commission of the crime. If there is a disagreement between one and two, if they see number one, he says competent. Number two says incompetent. They go see a number three. They break the tie. So that is the process that Jacob Chansley has been going through. Something very similar to that. I don't know specifically what he's been going through, but it's a mental health evaluation. And Reuters today came out and said that they've got an exclusive they say that the QAnon shaman was in plea negotiations or is in plea negotiations after the mental health diagnosis. OK, so uh, we've got some information. So something must have come out from that evaluation. The participant was in the January 6 riots, they say, negotiating a possible plea deal with prosecutors after prison psychologists found he suffers from a variety of mental illnesses, his attorney said. Right. And. You know, this is not something that you want to speculate about or joke about. It's something that probably I think many people may have been thinking, right, that maybe some of the people who were a part of this, you know, quote, insurrection, maybe they they, they had some actual mental problems. And you know, somebody who dressed like QAnon shaman might raise a flag for some people. And so everybody, you know, you, you don't want to ever presume that of somebody. You want to have a lot of compassion for people, anybody going through the justice system. But it was something that I think a lot of people were asking themselves in a, an interview defense lawyer albert watkins said that the officials at the federal bureau of prisons have diagnosed jacob chansley with transient schizophrenia bipolar disorder depression and anxiety now the B bureau of prison findings they have not been made public but they suggest that the mental condition deteriorated due to the stress of being held in solitary confinement at jail in alexandria virginia okay and this is a huge problem with our justice system. By the time we get to this mental health diagnosis evaluation, we have already done significantly more damage to this young man. And it is a, a very sad thing. And in my opinion, you can blame a lot of this on the media, puffing this whole thing up like it was an actual insurrection, like this was an actual organized attempt to seize control of the government when it wasn't, right? It was a lot of people who were out there who got angry, who got caught up in a movement, in a, in a moment, and we had a, a, a small portion of 
of them like you have in any society. You know, people don't realize this, right? If you look at 100 people, there's a, a high likelihood that a substantial portion of them have something going on mentally. You know, a huge swath of this country are on antidepressants, and a lot of people have undiagnosed problematic mental disorders. Coming out of COVID with 12 months of lockdown at that time didn't help. And so there's a lot of societal pressures that are bubbling up all over the place. And the media just said, no, these were white supremacist insurrectionist Trump supporters. And it's really more complicated than that. And, you know, Jacob Chansley is one of these people who was the forefront of the whole thing, front and center. And so he's being made an example of. And what the government has been doing to him is making him worse. And he has not been convicted of anything yet. He has not pled guilty to anything yet. He has the same presumption of innocence that you enjoy, except he doesn't enjoy it. He's actually being denied it. Bureau of Prison is keeping him in custody and his mental health is deteriorating. He is being punished for crimes that he has not been convicted of or pled guilty to. And that is reprehensible in the United States of America. Now, this is what his attorney filed on the 15th, so about a week ago, said that he wanted a motion to file a motion for leave to file a motion under seal. And so we're not going to know what's in this, right? So on the 15th of this month, USA versus Jacob Chansley. Chansley's defense lawyer said, by and through his counsel, we want the court to give us permission to file a motion under seal. He says the subject of this matter was addressed informally. So they probably had, you know, an off the record proceeding where all of the attorneys went up there, you know, prosecutor, defense attorney, go up to the judge's bench or the judge's chambers and talks about this. Said, hey, look, this Bureau of Prison report is coming out. Uh, it's not going to be good, right? It's saying that his mental condition has gotten worse. So the judge says, all right, listen, uh, I, make, I have a suggestion for you. The request here is compliant with the suggestion of the court. Defendant prays this court is going to grant permission to file the motion under seal. Of course, the judge is going to grant that. So the defense attorney now, we don't know what's going to be in that motion. He's got information that we don't know. But the court, in my opinion, is going to grant this, this permission to file this new motion under seal, which means we're not going to see it. Let's go back to Reuters. They have some more background for us. Says, as he spent more time in solitary, the decline in his acuity was noticeable, even to an untrained eye, said Watkins. He said that Chansley's 2006 mental health records from his time in the Navy show a similar diagnosis for, uh, to the Bureau of Prisons. Spokesman for the U.S. attorneys declined to comment on the case. Chansley's one of the most recognizable people there, of course. He's from Arizona. Shout out, was photographed inside the Capitol with horned headdress, shirtless and heavy tattoos, uh, saying that Trump was a savior figure and the elite Democrats are a cabal, which has been confirmed by Time magazine, of Satanist pedophiles and cannibals, although they didn't confirm that, that part. But they did confirm there's a cabal of them. He faces charges, including civil disorder obstructing an official proceeding, which means that apparently for those now in America, you get uh, six months incarceration just regardless. That's just how it is now. Watkins did not say what Chansley was considering pleading guilty to, but defendants negotiating plea deals uh, typically seek to reduce them to a less serious charge. Yeah, well done there, reporter. Yep, that is, that is accurate. Watkins said authorities will need to determine how Chansley can get access to the treatment he needs to actively participate in his own defense. Pleading guilty negates the ability to have a trial. Watkins said that the BOP evaluation of his client did not declare him to be mentally incompetent, but he does not, and he does not expect Chansley to undergo competency restoration treatment like I explained about. So it sounds like the, the evaluation said he's, he's competent enough that we're not gonna put him in that program, but it's concerning enough that the judge suggested that they file new motions under seal. Watkins said his client expressed some delusions, including believing that he was indeed related directly to Jesus and to Buddha, which is uh, kind of difficult to plot a legitimate insurrection if you're of that belief. I would imagine at least a legitimate insurrection. I don't know. Maybe they were all following him because he was a descendant of Jesus and Buddha. I don't know. Okay. What we've done, his attorney says, is we've taken a guy who is unarmed, peaceful. He's got a pre-existing mental vulnerability. We've rendered him a chocolate soup mess. Interesting language. Federal prosecutors arrested more than 535 people. The BOP in 2017 was faulted by the Justice Department for its housing units to confine inmates with mental illness. So it was already an issue. 
right? The inspector general who we talk a lot about here said in 2017, you guys are, are doing a terrible job. BOP agreed to place limits around the amount of time that the inmates have so that they have human contact, but that did not happen. Guess why not? COVID came through, led the BOP to step up solitary housing units as a way to quarantine inmates to contain the spread of the virus. Okay, well, We've got vaccines now and stuff. You know, do they still need to do that? Why is he still in solitary then? BOP spokesman said that inmates are sometimes held alone in a cell, but not cut off from human contact. We do not. Okay, whatever. All right. So the COVID-19s, what led them to place him in restriction? All right. So uh, three federal hospitals. All right. So let's go over to the discovery document. We know what they're doing to Jacob Chansley is, you know, reprehensible. They're doing it to everybody else. The one caveat there being, right, if there would have been a serious mental competency problem, judges will often be hesitant to let somebody out unless they have a very serious place to land, right? The court's not going to send somebody out of custody if they're mentally problematic, if they could be a threat to society or to the world. Jacob Chansley, to my knowledge, didn't do anything violent. He was just there, you know, part of uh, an entourage that made its way into the Capitol. But don't haven't seen any history of, 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 uh, of violence from the government's documents that we've talked about. But, okay, let's see what's going on here. This is, this is the memorandum. This is the discovery motion. This, so, as I mentioned, there's so much to talk about in these cases. It's actually hard to sort of decipher all of it. But... In this, in this particular case, one of the main criticisms that I've had from the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice is that they're not prosecuting these timely enough. If they would have let Jacob Chansley out of custody, then, they, then I would have been more okay with them taking time to disclose things. But they don't get both. They don't get to keep him in custody and demand he sits there while they take their sweet time doing whatever they need to do. That's not appropriate. If they, if they need more time, that's fine, but you got to let him out of custody. But that's not what's happening here. They're going to keep him in custody. Every time they try to get him out, the government opposes it. And then they submit a garbage motion like this. That is so irritating. 12 pages. U.S. memorandum regarding status of discovery. Here it is. The U.S. government files a memorandum to describe the purpose of this discovery. And discovery means evidence. This is what we're talking about. This is police reports, body camera footage, surveillance footage, you know, any cell phone records, 911 calls. Uh, closed circuit TV camera, all of it. That's what's called discovery. And as a defendant, as Jacob Chansley, as somebody who's being charged with a crime, you don't have any of that in your possession. The government has all of it. So you need to get that before you can start working your case up, before you can start preparing your defense. Now, a defendant doesn't necessarily need that to close the case. Okay, A defendant and an attorney if they have a good deal, if they know what the evidence is, they don't necessarily need to wait around and get it all. With that framework in place, let's see what's happening here. As an initial matter, substantial discovery has already been provided. Okay, well, that's not what we're talking about. We want all of it. All of it. And Jacob Chansley has a right to a speedy trial. Dang it. So they have the right to get all of it timely so that they can make a decision about whether to set the case to trial or not. However, as set forth below, because the defendant's criminal acts took place as many other crimes around here, the government's investigation has resulted in the accumulation and the creation of a massive volume of data that may, may be relevant to many defendants. Okay, well, we don't care about all the many defendants here. We care about Jacob Chansley in this case. This case is not about all of the other defendants. It's about Jacob Chansley. The government is diligently working to meet its unprecedented, overlapping, interlocking discovery obligations by providing voluminous electronic information in the most comprehensive and usable format, which is a stinking joke. This is a joke. The fact that they don't have this system set up. I, we had a previous show. I talked to you about a city court that is six minutes down the road from us that processes 650 cases a month on a slow month. That includes discovery. That includes body cameras and surveillance footage from all of the old town bars. It includes interviews with multiple witnesses. It includes many trespass cases and many disorderly conduct cases. And we have a prosecutor's office with like 10 prosecutors right down the street who can handle that caseload on a budget that's like a percent of what the DOJ gets. So the U.S. Attorney's Office, the entire Department of Justice with the entire FBI and all of these other agents everybody's involved. They can't figure out 535 defendants. 
it's actually a joke, folks. I don't buy this for a second. I don't buy it for one stinking second. I think that they're making this up and they are submitting these motions in bad faith to the courts because they know the courts are going to rule in their favor. The courts are going to agree with them and say, you're right, this was unprecedented. You're right, this is crazy. We are, uh, you're working so hard, it must be really, really difficult. So you're granted, take all the time in the world you need. It's not okay. Now, here's everything that they're going to put into this, you know, into this request. And the point here is that the government doesn't need all of this to convict Jacob Chansley. They've got what they need. They have enough of it. So they can go prosecute him. They could take their case to trial. They could say, we've got enough evidence on you. We don't need to go through another 400,000 videos. We've got enough. We, we, we saw it. We all watched the videos. They got him standing there in the Senate chamber. They could go to trial and convict him if they wanted to. But they are delaying this discovery stuff out purposely because they want to keep him in custody and make him an example of it. It's a political prosecution through and through. I don't know how else to say it. Here are some of the things that they say that they're still working on. So we, as the government, we've accumulated a voluminous material that may contain discovery for many, 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 if not all defendants. Again, nobody cares about your work for the other defendants. That's your problem and their problem. This is one person's case. You don't get to you don't get to treat Jacob Chansley like everybody else that you want to. He's not he's not a symbol of all of the Capitol Hill defendants. He's one man with one case. The government is trying to make him bear the burden of all of their discovery problems that they have elsewhere. That's not appropriate. Not at all. Thousands of hours they need. Uh, 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 here's everything we've accumulated. Thousands of hours of closed circuit videos from U.S. Capitol Police, Metro Police, U.S. Secret Service, several hundred automated traffic enforcement cameras. Guess what? Nobody cares if it's not relevant to Chansley's case. Footage from the Capitol uh, with C-SPAN. Great. Got that. Do you have enough to convict him? Good. Thousands of hours of body worn camera. So from Montgomery County Police, Fairfax County, Virginia State Police, all of that radio transmission. We've got GPS records for all of the radios, hundreds of thousands of tips, including 237,000 digital media tips. Are you kidding me? You're going to tell me that they're going to go through all of those for Jacob Chansley and then they're going to send those all over to him and he's going to have to go through them also. They are burying them in paper and they're using that as an excuse to continue the case out indefinitely it's a violation of his right to a speedy trial drives me bananas location history for the thousands of devices present in the capital subscriber and toll records for hundreds of phone numbers cell tower data for thousands of devices connected to the capital's interior distributed antenna system including during the capital breach they got all three major telephone companies, a collection of over 1 million parlor posts, replies, and related data. They've got over 1 million parlor videos and images, 20 terabytes of data, damage estimates from multiple offices at the U.S. Capitol, multitude of digital services and storage communication devices, responses to grand jury subpoenas, over 6,000 which have been issued, seeking documents like financial records, telephone records, electronic communication service provider records, and travel records. And so that's really what it comes down to. They need more time to investigate every single one of these people until the end of the earth because they're going to use their presence at the Capitol as leverage, as an opening of the door to say, oh no, look, they're there. And so we have to go investigate everything this person does until the end of time because they were there. They might be a threat. So we need access to their financial records, their telephone records, their electronic communication records, their travel records. We want grand jury subpoenas for all of these people for every single crevice of their life. We want access to it. And the courts are just going to give it to them. Very, very reprehensible stuff, my friends. Let's see what you have to say about it. We're going to go over to watchingthewatchers.locals.com, which is where we have our chat form. we got a bunch of questions coming in. Let's see who's here. Kenny1B says, uh, Rob, you didn't read my question from the last segment. Don't know if the form was working right. So Kenny1B, you know, I, 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 I missed it. I apologize for that. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. It, it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to navigate on this thing. So sometimes I just, I, I, I'm going to miss a question. I apologize for that, Kenny 1B. Send me another one. We'll make sure we get it. We have Thunder 7 says, Rob, what will this mean for Viking man's case? I've given up on these political prisoners ever getting justice. By the way, there's an old man wandering around Washington murmuring and whispering that he's POTUS. Can he be forced to have a mental competency test? That's a good question. Uh, does he need to take a test? I think it's pretty conclusive. I think we all can agree incompetent it's pretty obvious on that one now for viking man's case uh you know look if he takes a plea deal and it's a reasonable plea deal i don't have any issues with that i don't have any problems with any of these guys pleading guilty for the crimes they committed right 
I just want to make sure that the repercussions are not something that are going to be overly punitive, which they obviously are because we've covered similar, similarly situated defendants on the other side of the ideological aisle with Antifa and BLM. And we talked about the other protesters that were in there in the Senate chamber, interrupting, interfering with government during the Kavanaugh proceedings. They all got $25 fines. So it's, it's, one set of very, very harsh rules for one particular ideology, not for the others. But if, look, if he takes a plea deal and he says, I'll, I'll, I'll just take time served, let me out of custody, send me back to my family so that we can get some mental health screening, right? That, that's, an okay to, that's an okay way to resolve the case. Right? I'm not going to be somebody out here who's saying that, uh, you know, that these guys should, should, should be released and a, a letter of apology should be written for them, right? There were, there were some bad activities that happened that day, but not such that, that deserve the amount of retribution and punishment and outright constitutional violations that are happening to these people. That's not appropriate, and I, and I, and I can't stand for it. All right, we have Peely Wally is here, says, here in the UK, if you do a crime, you have a mental health trouble, uh, you can be sent to a mental health hospital until you are better, which could be for the rest of your life and some, sadly, for some folk. Is that the same in the U.S.? It, it can, right? There are all sorts of different committal proceedings. We have, you know, involuntary commitments and things like that, 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 that yes, that can go that direction. Typically not in criminal law. You know, I, I really haven't seen many things go that route in criminal. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen a case go that route. So it's not, it's not like sort of like what you see in the movies, right? Where you kind of get locked up and you're just gone, gone with the wind, but, but certainly it, it can happen. No question about it. Thanks for chiming in. Good to see you from the UK. We have uh, Sharon Quidney says this poor guy, whatever happened to cruel and unusual punishment? He needs help. Not months in jail. This is outrageous. I agree with you. I think rehabilitation and restoration is much better than punishment and pain. All right. We have another one from Nadarb is here says, could he be an informant? Orders under seal? Supposedly spent time in solitary. No one saw him. Gave a lot of media attention that was important to drive an important narrative. Was in the Navy. They are saying he's mentally incompetent, but not enough to leave. All seems a bit suspect to me. Fed alert. Fed alert. That's an interesting uh, interesting little take there, Nadarb. You know me, man. I love a good conspiracy. I love a good you know, alternative narrative that is... You know, a big part of what we do. The police say that something happened. We say, no, they didn't. You, you made that up. You didn't see that. They say, they say they saw it. They didn't see it. You get the evidence. You see where they were located. You see where their car was. You see what the lighting was looking like. You see what their body cam says. They didn't see anything, but they wrote they did. So there's always a different explanation, and it's a lot of fun to play with those. We have Leaf and Bug in the house. Says, I'm so happy and relieved that the nice FBI lady and all of her Fed colleagues are doing such a wonderful job looking after everyone's rights. You can quit your job now, Rob. They've got this. You know, that's a good point, Leafy. I think that you're right. I, I really do trust Jill Sanborn to execute the laws and the Constitution very faithfully to make sure that all of our rights are being preserved. We have three girlies here says, a lot of people with mental health issues are in prison. None of them deserve to be put in a, 23, in a cell 23 hours a day. In my former prison, there was a pod that was just people with mental illness. They were not put in general population. Sadly, without mental resources on the outside to institutionalize them in a good, healthy place, they get remanded to prison. We get, we get put on medication while they're in prison, and they get stable. And once they leave prison, they get off medication, and the cycle just continues. Jacob Chansley deserves to go home to a more stable place. Great comment. Thank you for that, three girlies. Yeah, so... Uh, for, former prison, you know what it what it's like. You know, you know, it, it it can be rough. It can be very difficult in there. And so, if you have somebody who's already you know partially broken or on the verge of breaking, and you put them in those conditions, the likelihood of them continuing their decline and, and breaking further is is likely. It's 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 expected, and that's what's happening. We have Sharon says, "Wow, a regime change. I could see a big lawsuit for violation of civil rights all over the place. Speedy trial, cruel and unusual punishment." due process, et cetera. Yeah, there's a lot of them. We've covered a lot. Jeremy Matridis here says, Rob, have you ever seen a case like this before? Every aspect of Chansley's case has been such an atrocity to the U.S. justice system. With the way this case is already going, Chansley will be over 200 years old before his case is finally dismissed because everyone tried, tied to prosecuting the case will have passed away. There's something to that, Jeremy. I know I know you're being hyperbolic with the 200 years thing, but, but there's something to that. You know, if Jacob Chansley was symbolic, 
literally, right? I mean, he actually was symbolic of the whole thing. His picture was everywhere. You, you think of it, you can kind of picture the, the headdress and the whole outfit there because it was very provocative and it left a big imprint in a lot of people's memories. And so the, the longer that they can sort of, you know, keep that dangling out there, that, that, that sort of stick that they keep swinging around there for many people in America who do think that this was like 9-11 or worse than Pearl Harbor or whatever, you know, the worst thing since the Civil War. And they're motivated by that. Every time that they bring out this insurrection flag, you know, they start waving that around, people respond. So, I, I, you know, I don't expect it to be over soon, but hopefully it is for his sake. You know, for his sake, man, hopefully it's over. Sharon Quinn, he says, hey, at least they haven't executed him yet. Unlike Vanderloob, accused of the Reichstag fire. Oof, it's tough. Sergeant Bob is here, says, all levels of law enforcement... Constitution, then statutory law, then case law, then application to the incident. Honesty, integrity, judgment, not too hard. I have not gone to the dark side. I only stand for principles. It's awesome. It's a great, it's a great comment, Sergeant Bob. Thank you for that as well. Very good. And, you know, <laughs> that's appropriate. That's, that's the right way to do things. I, I, I'm actually kind of shocked that Jill Sanborn said that. It's like, well, we've got a, a very big, you know, important concept here to protect American lives. So we, so we got to think about that too, in conjunction with the constitution. And you're going, what? There's no limiting principle to that. If, if that's, if that is her perspective, how does she limit that? How do you, how do you manage that? How do you tell all of the other FBI agents, use your judgment? We've seen how that works. It doesn't work well. Whistleblower pandas here says they want to make a new Patriot Act so they can arrest Trump and Trump supporters running up to 2024. They want to do that or they want to strangle the speech, something like that. We got Farmer's Daughter says, hey, Robert, there were dozens of hours of video from many different angles, YouTube, that have magically disappeared. It seems these government hacks have lost their mind. Call me crazy, but I don't think demonic is a far stretch. They will never relent. There are many people out there that say we're in the middle of a spiritual war, that this is something that is more fundamental, deeper down might be of that perspective. It's Ed is here says this isn't right. A guy wearing a headdress caught up in a crowd walking into the Capitol building and the FBI spend millions figuring things out. Where was this kind of investigation to prevent 9-11? Yeah, they kind of botched that one too, didn't they? On average, 40 people are shot in Chicago every weekend. Where's the same vigor? This is BS. This doesn't make me scared for supporting the orange man in freedom. This makes me want to stand up and tell the FBI to go bleep themselves. Oof, man, you're, it's Ed. That's a spicy comment, but I feel your, I feel your energy, man. I feel your emotion. Peely Wally is here, says there are many cases here of people being convicted of crimes and sent to mental hospitals for the rest of their time. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer's daughters over there chatting away up in, uh, and watching the watchers.locals biblical references over there. Very good comments. And let's see what's over going on. Let's give some shout outs over to YouTube. We've got Zulu's here. Half Irish is here. We have eight straight and arrow 62s in the house. Josh Seely. Hello to Josh. We got Zorro, Lindy Lou. We have Michael Palmer's in the house along with Lady Zaga's over there. Good to see you all on locals. We've got Baranski's in the house. Want to know. We have uh, Arcturians is here. We have Sharon Quidney, of course, and uh, and Jeremy Matrita and many others are also over there chatting. Good to see you all, and thanks for your support. So great questions, great comments. Thanks for the love from watchingthewatchers.locals.com. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Before you head out, I want to just remind you that I am a criminal defense lawyer here in Scottsdale, Arizona, where my team and I, we've got a long history of helping good people facing criminal charges to find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and beyond that in their lives. Our phone number for a free case evaluation is 480-787-0394. You can also find us online at www.rrlawaz.com. We can help with any type of criminal charge in the state of Arizona, things like DUI, drug offenses, misdemeanor offenses. And we can also help with clearing up old case records like expunging cases or making sure that you can restore your rights so that you can vote again or possess a firearm again or apply for some other federal benefits. We can remove mug shots off the internet. Basically, any time that you or somebody you know or love is in trouble with the law in the state of Arizona, we have an amazing team of people. We would just love the opportunity to help. And our phone number, of course, 480 787 3 Nine, four. And if you don't need any legal services, that's a very good thing. But you may be interested in some informational offerings so that you are prepared 
if you do have to deal with the police. And of course, I want to invite you to head on over to gumroad.com slash Robert Gruler. You'll notice here, I've got several different trainings that are available, including the law enforcement interaction training. This is the one, two, three rule for dealing with the police. It's one rule you need, two questions that the police can ask of you, and three responses if they ask you a problematic question. So that's available now. You can also get a load up by personal productivity system here called Existence Systems. Fun little course. And then we have here, if you're a lawyer or a legal professional, be sure to check out this program. We are meeting twice every month. Again, all of this over at Gumroad dot com slash Robert Gruller. And if none of that sounds any good to you, well, just go ahead and, and give us a follow because I'm working on some other products and some other offerings. And of course, if you have not already done so, want to invite you one more time to head on over to watching the watchers dot locals dot com. It's where you can support the show and it's where we can connect. We've got monthly Zoom meetings and a lot of other goodies coming up. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your love and support. I will see you on the next one.